Welcome to Parcells Middle School to another podcast presentation for Hans History Next. Hans History Nest is the place where U.S. history is enjoyed and salvaged forever. This podcast is on the American Revolution from July 1776 through the winter of 1778. In the summer of 1776, a delegate from Virginia, Lee, made a proposal to the Second Continental Congress to create a declaration committee, to create perhaps a declaration of independence from Great Britain. This declaration committee was made up of five individuals. These five individuals seen in the painting in the middle portion of the screen here are five individuals from varying states. The first individual here is Thomas Jefferson. Seen here to his left is Roger Sherman. And next to him, Benjamin Franklin. John Adams, and the individual here, Robert Livingston. All of these individuals come from different states, and we'll see why that's important here in a moment. Thomas Jefferson is from Virginia. Roger Sherman is from the state of Connecticut. Benjamin Franklin from Pennsylvania. And John Adams from Massachusetts. And lastly, Robert Livingston of New York. This group of five made the decision that Thomas Jefferson here would be the individual that would make the original draft. And so he got to work on this original draft. His original draft, as seen here, had only a few variances from what would become the adopted version. One of them is this idea of sacred and undeniable We hold these truths to be sacred and undeniable. That will be altered. The other major thing that we'll see in here is going down reasons for the independence of the colonies from England is this item here, item 25. And this item is one that will be completely removed from the Declaration of Independence. And if one were to read this, one will notice that it is basically entirely about slavery. And what will transpire is the other committee members will consider this to be something that could be divisive amongst the other colonies. The oddity of this situation about the topic of slavery when it came to the original draft is that it will be basically three individuals, Jefferson of Virginia, Benjamin Franklin of Pennsylvania, and John Adams of Massachusetts. But it will be Benjamin Franklin that really promotes this idea that this can't be in there, that it's too divisive, it's going to destroy the unity. And Thomas Jefferson, really amongst these individuals, is the slave owner. So we have really the slave owner trying to end slavery and those that don't trying to keep it for the time being as a result of it being divisive. Perhaps an interesting twist in the Declaration Committee findings. When it's all said and done, the Declaration will be provided on July the 2nd to the individuals at the Second Continental Congress, and they will vote on it. Uh, The final vote will be 12 colonies in favor and none will be opposed to it. Only one colony will abstain from voting, and that will be the state of New York. And so the voting is, you could say, a unanimous vote to adopt the Declaration of Independence. On July the 2nd, the members present at the Second Continental Congress sign it, One will notice 
here that John Hancock's signature is really large. It's centered. He will be the president of the Continental Congress, and so he originally will be the only signer. Um, the others sign the document in agreement, and they sign it pretty much by colony, and that's why you'll see these groupings throughout. Um, but ultimately, that's what transpires with the signing. Seen up here in the right-hand corner is perhaps one of the more well-known of paintings. This is the signing of the Declaration of Independence. It's a famous painting by John Trumbull, and it's in the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C., and one will see the Committee of Five seen here presenting to the President, John Hancock, and the Second Continental Congress. And so you can kind of get a glimpse of perhaps what it would have been like. The bottom line was uh, it's signed, and it's made public on July the 4th in 1776, and this is why we celebrate this as our Independence Day. The draft will be sent across the sea to the Atlantic, to the King, and to Parliament to be read. While the Decl Declaration of Independence was uh, being signed, you'll notice that one of the next major battles in the war is taking place at the same moment. This is the first battle in which George Washington will be the commanding general. The other thing that's important is if we recall the British plan to win the war, their plan is to win the war quickly. And to implement this plan, they have to take over the large cities. The first large city was Boston, and that ultimately was the Battle of Bunker Hill. The next major city is what we're looking at right now, and this is the Battle of New York City. The landing of British troops begins in August um, on the 22nd, and if one would look here, they're going to land over here at what we call Long Island. And so this is where they're actually beginning. George Washington will find himself against perhaps the best general for the British, seen down here, General William Howe. The other one in, is going to be commanding in the south, and that's Cornwallis. The British begin here, but then after several days of waiting, they will go down here near the East River, and they're going to then begin moving northward from this way. It's a tactic to perhaps surprise General George Washington. One thing of note, I want us to also understand that we have hired troops, Hessians, fighting in the war. These are Germans and they're going to be helping out the British. But ultimately what we have going on here is the British are coming this way. You'll notice all the blue is George Washington or the American troops, all the red and this being the Hessians. So the British will come here, but Howe's secret plan is coming around this way, what we call a flanking maneuver, trying to go around the American troops, a very brilliant maneuver on his part. And you'll see that George Washington's troops do get a bit flanked. They're here, and they're going to be outflanked. Now, George Washington, as we know, his plan in this war is to make this war a long war. And the worst thing that George Washington can have happen is to get captured. He must make it a long war by making sure that he gets away to fight another day. And here's where the brilliance of George Washington comes in, even in his first battle. He loses the battle, but ultimately he's going to show his brilliance. We will notice here on August the 29th and the 30th, the British are preparing for a siege where they're going to surround George Washington, cut him off, and force him into surrender. Washington sees the desperation here. And what George Washington does under the cover of night is he is going to have his army 
go back to where the British began, which is Manhattan Island here, um, or otherwise known as the Long Island area, and he's going to evacuate all of his troops under the, the skies of the night. He's going to move a whole army here, and then they're going to move northward in the daytime and basically get away. Now, George Washington, a lot of historians believe, as seen over here on the left, most historians believe that General Howe could have really perhaps put an end to this war here. But it's George Washington's skill, his ability to be uh, a tactician, his courage, and most of all, though, his inspiration with the men um, to get them out of here. And what's going to happen here is George Washington now has to prepare himself for the winter. And the colonists will retreat to the New Jersey area for the winter. Now, as seen here on the map that we created in class, just to give you an idea as to where George Washington is going, here is the Battle of New York City here. And what he's doing is he's moving down southward towards the city of Trenton, New Jersey. And this is where he's going to encounter his next battle. The Battle of Trenton is going to occur on the 26th of December in 1776, and the date is pretty important for us to under, understand it. Obviously, in Christian faith, this is the day after what is known as Christmas, and all of the troops, British and Hessian, are all Christians, and George Washington saw this as um, an opportunity. And the opportunity that he sees here is the fact that most of the troops, the British troops that is, they will be partying. And this partying could lead to some overindulgence in the use of alcohol and so forth. And so the morning, early morning of the day after Christmas could be a very good opportunity for him to have a secret attack. And so that's kind of what's going to happen here at the Battle of Trenton. Now, seen down here in the map, all the way into the corner, I want us to sort of understand where this map is. The north part of the map is actually here to the left. George Washington is going to be here. This is actually the state of Pennsylvania. This Delaware River separates Pennsylvania from New Jersey, and Trenton is in New Jersey, seen here. George Washington's plan is to cross this Delaware River. All of his troops are going to cross this river at night. Hopefully quiet. They're going to move a whole army here. And the object is when he gets across is he wants to surround this town. And you'll notice all the blue here is he's going to have his troops move all the way around the town of New Jersey, the town in New Jersey of Trenton. And then in the early morning of December the 26th, he will then attack. And this becomes perhaps his most famous event. And this painting seen down here of George Washington crossing the Delaware River in the cold and so forth has become really quite famous. Ultimately, what happens is this works out. Uh, he is able to capture a huge number of Hessian troops, as seen here. And these Hessian troops, German hired mercenaries, um, are all, many of them are going to surrender. The Patriots are going to use this as perhaps one of the great moral victories of the war. Yeah, this isn't your typical battle. I mean, you're basically attacking everybody when they're sleeping and wearing their pajamas. Um, but this is something that's desperately needed by George Washington, is he needs something to be positive. He wants his men going into the winter with something that they can hang their hat on, some type of a victory. And that will come here at the Battle of Trenton. I just happened to have some footage of this crossing of George Washington. Here it is quickly. The American Revolution, a miniseries starring all your friends from Sesame Street, telling the story of how the United States of America was born. 
more or less. Let's see, taking rolls, John, Joe, Patrick, William, yeah. George, George Washington, that's me, present. You seem to be missing someone. Yeah, who you, who you, I am, sir. I am your furry blue helper, brother. Sir. Uh, and what is this in your hand? Hmm? Oh, 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 it is a balloon, General, sir. Uh, oh, and the streamers and noisemakers. Oh, today is the day we surprised our British. Remember? <laughs> of course I remember. I am the general. Oh, oh, now I may be new on the job, but I know how to plan a surprise. Now, here is what we do, okay? We, we, yeah, I'll show you. A visual demonstration. Okay. We hide. We hide right here. And when the British get here, we jump up and we yell, surprise! And then we throw our streamers and we make a lot of noise with our noisemakers. Oh, and do you think they will get here, sir? Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Uh, Grover. <laughs> Yes. We do not want the British to come here, Grover. We want them to go home, all the way back to England. England that way? Yes. I do not understand. Well, let me explain. The King of England keeps telling us what we can and cannot do without even asking our opinion. Oh, that is not very nice! Exactly. No! So what we're going to do, we... We're going to create our own country, right, man? Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, yeah, create our own country. We are going to make the British soldiers go back to England. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Over there, England. Yes. yes. Well, how are we going to do that, sir? We, we are going to surprise them. Oh, yeah, right, we right, are right. going. Yes. We are going to row across the river and sneak up on them. Across the river. Yes, the oh. British soldiers. Will be too surprised to put up a fight. Stop it! Oh, 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 but sir, mm. it is Christmas Eve. I bet that the British soldiers have the day off. What? Mm. Yes. The British, what the British soldiers have the day That's off? That's what I heard. Exactly. Exactly. So they won't be expecting us. Yes. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 I get yeah. it now. What a smart general type person thing you are! The British Army will get the surprise of their life, or my name's not George Washington. George Washington! Come man! Come man! To the boat! That, 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 that was George Washington? Hey, sir! I seen you put your money! So cheese. Mm. Okay. Sir, sir, oh, dear, sir, wait, wait for me. Well, as you can see, when they said cheese, this is what they were referring to. Cheese. This very painting. Leave it to Sesame Street. After the winter months, the Fighting is going to shift to some of the other major cities. The first is going to be the colonial capital, which is Philadelphia. Seen down here, this is Philadelphia. It's really known as the Battle of Germantown, and this is where most of the fighting will take place. The United States is going to be defeated by General Howe of the British, and he will successfully take over the capital of Philadelphia. The colonists will move from Philadelphia to this spot here known as York. And this is York, Pennsylvania, and this will be the next capital. And when it is here, uh, the president of the Continental Congress will be Henry Lawrence for most of the time. So the colonists will make up shop here, and that will become the new temporary capital since Philadelphia has been taken over. This, of course, if we look at the British plan, the British plan to win the war is to capture the big cities. As we know, they've already taken Boston. That was the Battle of Bunker Hill. We saw previously they did capture New York City. Now we have Philadelphia. And Philadelphia is the next of the three big cities. Remember, there are five 
big cities that they outlined the British to win this war. While Philadelphia is going on, there is a move by the British also from the north. Seen here, this red star, they will travel down the St. Lawrence, down this way, Lake Champlain, and what they're trying to do is they're trying to move on the next big city, which is here in New York, and that is the city of Albany. And if one can control Albany, one would think that you can control the Hudson River. And so this is going to be ultimately the battle over control of the Hudson River. The United States, George Washington, dispatches some troops up the Hudson River to try and stop this move towards Albany. The British troops are going to be led by a very formidable general. His name is General Burgoyne, and he's nicknamed Gentleman Johnny. Ladies, make sure you're not going to go nuts here, but Gentleman Johnny is Nick is he is the most eligible bachelor back in Great Britain if there was a show most eligible bachelor this guy would have been on it gentleman Johnny Burgoyne is a heartthrob this guy is so well known back in England because of his good looks and being the most eligible bachelor back there he is leading the British troops on this attack for Albany now, leading the American troops are going to be two gentlemen, and those guys, their names will be, and you'll probably have heard of them, Benedict Arnold, and the other individual is going to be a guy by the name of Horatio Gates. Now, these two guys basically of equal rank at this time. They're leading the American troops up from the south, and their goal is to try and get ahead of or north of Albany to prevent Burgoyne from getting to the major city. And they successfully do that. The battle is going to take place here, known as Saratoga, the Battle of Saratoga. The Battle of Saratoga, one of the important things for us to make sure that we add to our notes, is this fact that it's nicknamed the turning point of the war. And we will address this here in a moment. As seen here, the Battle of Saratoga, the commanding person for the colonies is going to be Horatio Gates. And of course, the heartthrob, Gentleman Johnny Burgoyne, as seen up here. And, of course, the individual that we need to also take into account is here on the left, Benedict Arnold. Benedict Arnold's role in winning the Battle of Saratoga is of immense value. Uh, he will be the leader that gets right out in front. He's out there with the troops fighting at the Battle of Saratoga. He actually gets wounded in this battle, and most people that were there would attribute that it was his rallying and his uh, confidence that the troops had in him that led them to victory. What will transpire later on, though, with the entire uh, Benedict Arnold becoming a traitor, is that George Washington is actually going to uh, promote Gates to general in this war and Benedict Arnold is going to become very very upset at this and this is going to lead him uh, ultimately to becoming a traitor and giving secrets to the British uh, one of the perhaps terrible parts of the war but uh, this is what led to it anyways that little side note this battle is nicknamed the turning point of the war basically because while this battle is going on, 
Benjamin Franklin has been sent to France as an envoy for the United States of America in an effort to try and get France to become our ally. Word of this victory over gentleman Johnny Burgoyne gets back to France. Uh, ben Franklin is over there, and as we have seen in and discussed previously, Benjamin Franklin also has uh, a guy by the name of John Lawrence, who is the son of the President of the Continental Congress, Henry Lawrence. Ben Franklin has him with him, and Benjamin Franklin will successfully procure or obtain what is known as the Franco-American Alliance. And what this means is France is going to help the U.S. in this war. And then we'll see at the end of the war, this becomes very, very valuable in our victory overall. Going back to our map that we created, after the Battle of Saratoga, seen here, the winter months will, of course, convene on everyone. And what's going to happen here is George Washington is going to take his troops here to a place known as Valley Forge, located in southern Pennsylvania just outside of, or east of, excuse me, west of, uh, Philadelphia. And at Valley Forge is where George Washington is going to use the winter months to train the troops. If there's one thing that the Continental Army lacks, it's its ability to fight in battles in the traditional bayonet form of fighting. And this is what they need to be trained in. George Washington knows, yeah, we can continue to fight in these guerrilla tactics and so forth, but ultimately at some point they are going to have to match up with bayonets in a traditional style of warfare if they're going to be victorious. So George Washington will acquire this individual by the name of Baron von Steuben, and he is a Prussian and he is a military tactician, and he is going to be the one that's going to perhaps be the greatest contribution in the training of the Continental Army in the proper use of the bayonet. And he will do this throughout the winter months, and the troops are really ill-supplied at Valley Forge, as we can see from some of the pictures in the left up here, and here many of them are foraging for food, um, you know, lack of clothing, etc. But the bottom line is uh, George Washington gets them through these winter months and they will be a formidable military group as a result of their training. And this is where our podcast will conclude at this time.